First Sunday of each month, we partake together of the Lord's table. And if you're able, we would surely encourage you to stay and, and uh, partake together with us. If you have to leave, we uh, understand. Uh, as the worship team uh, leads us in song, you can come up. We have three tables, uh, one on each side and then one here at the center. Uh, take the elements, take them back to your seat, and then take your seat and then wait so we can partake together. Go ahead and come on up. In the Gospel of Luke, the 22nd chapter, we have the account of the Last Supper. And in verse 14, Luke writes that when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'll take the packaging and peel back the top part, you'll find the bread there and just take it out and hold on to it for a moment. I'm often reminded in our culture how the richness of that which we're about to do is missed and misunderstood even. In that culture, when you would break bread with someone, you were bound to them for life, even unto death. You were becoming one with the person with whom you were breaking bread with. Breaking bread in that culture, and even today, modern day, especially in my culture, in the Arab culture, when you eat bread and break bread with somebody, it is a very intimate experience. And by the way, this is why the Jews would never eat with a Gentile, because they would not want that bonding intimacy with a Gentile as a Jew. It was forbidden. It was anathema. And this is why, by the way, Jesus came under such intense criticism because of who he would eat with, in whose home he would go into. What, what was he doing there? Does he know? We don't, we don't do that. We don't eat with those people. We don't associate with those people. What was Jesus doing? He was wanting that intimate bond to become one with them and them with him. Growing up as a kid, I <laughs> was just horrified when I would watch my dad and my uncles uh, take their hand and, and eat with their hands, as is the custom, from the same rice. I mean, it was so gross. I mean, it's just <laughs> gross, man. And, and they would double dip, you know, <laughs> in the same hummus and baba ghanoush. And, and, but, it was deliberate. And here's why. Because the thought is the germs that are in you is in me, and it makes no difference because we're one. It's a common union, communion. We're becoming one together. And that's why it was so intimate. Now, take that and view this through that lens. 
This is the one ordinance that Jesus gave us to do in remembrance of him. And how appropriate to remember what he did for us in that he wants that intimacy with us. And it's possible because of the finished work on the cross. His broken body, like that Passover lamb, whose body was broken after it was inspected for four days to be found without spot or wrinkle or blemish, exactly the amount of time that Jesus was on trial and found to be without spot or blemish, blameless, sinless, perfect, pure. And they would take that Passover lamb and they would slit its throat and sacrifice it, shedding its blood, breaking its body. And then the angel of death would pass over the house of the Israelites who had taken that lamb, taken the blood of that lamb, the broken body of that lamb, found pure, they would take that blood and they would put it on the door of their house in the shape of a cross, by the way. A foreshadow of the finished work on the cross fulfilled by our Passover lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus the Christ. So that the angel of death passes over us as well. So as you partake, think of what he did in our stead. His body broken for us. Let's do this in remembrance of him, if you would partake with me. Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving us this to do in remembrance of you. We do get busy, caught up in the cares and the affairs of our busy lives, and how often we do forget what you did for us, in that you died for us and paid for us in full for all of our sins, so that you could offer us the free gift of salvation. Lord, how great a salvation it is, and how great you are, who is like unto you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Luke goes on to write in the same way, after the supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. If you take the rest of the packaging and peel it back, and again, just hold on to it for a moment. The bread, a symbol of his body broken, the cup, a symbol of his blood shed in our stead. I don't think it can be underestimated or understated, the importance of the symbolism that we hold in our hands. The Bible says that there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Now think about this. We're told that in the Old Testament, the sacrificing of the animals, particularly the lamb, was not sufficient until the Lamb of God would come and fulfill those sacrifices. It would only cover the sin until. It's in Hebrew, kufar where we get the English word cover. It was the mercy seat that would cover for God's mercy. The sin had not been removed yet. It was until Jesus came and died on the cross and rose again from the dead that it was complete. It is finished. The veil was torn. The cover removed. No longer are our sins covered now. According to the prophecy of Isaiah, our sins are removed. And get this, as far as the east is from the west, and God remembers them no more. Now, listen, I, as a fellow sinner, okay, um, that's a cause for celebration, is it not? And that's what we're celebrating and commemorating, is it not? every sin we've ever committed, all the sins we are presently committing, and even the sins we have yet to commit, 
paid for in full, removed as far as the east is from the, the west, and remembered no more. Now with that, would you partake with me? And after you do, if you would, please stand. Lord, again, thank you. <laughs> I, it's inadequate, really. And we say it often, that it's really not possible for us to thank you enough for what you did for us. We too, Lord, eagerly await that great and final day, like you, when we will partake with you, when this finds its fulfillment in your kingdom. And Lord, we can't wait for that day. This is just a, a taste, just a, a hint through a glass dimly, it's blurry. But when we see you face to face and partake with you in your kingdom, it will be so grand and glorious, it's unfathomable. And so Lord, until then, thank you and come quickly. Maranatha, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. If we don't see you here on Thursday night, we'll see you on Lord Willing Sunday.